This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview, PA, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, and we're ready to talk about professional wrestling on Wrestling Mayhem Show episode. I don't have the notes up. What episode is this, uh, Producer Missy? We're five. one episode away from 600. We're 599 Tuesdays. We've what? been talking about professional wrestling and having a blast doing it. And we're ready to do it yet again here from Pittsburgh, PA. We got a hell of a night uh, planned, completely planned, completely planned tonight. Uh, first of all, from Johnstown, PA, he is Bobby F. J. Town. I have a special friend that wants to congratulate you. Congratulations on 599 episodes, Sorg. Yay! <laughs> thanks Carlos, for, just want to say hi. Thanks for joining me, us, Bobby. And of course, I saw I'm you. Just, I'm, I saw oh, you. I'm, I saw you in person, and I'm so glad you didn't throw up after I, NXT I show. I I didn't get sick after NXT this time. That was a good sign. That was a good sign. It was awesome, but I was starving, and I stopped at at Sheets to get a hot two hot dogs, and they were the greatest hot dogs I ever had. Wow! <laughs> Take they, that, Wawa. I, they were, they, uh, Wawa sucks. <laughs> Bobby, when have you ever Johnson. been to a Wawa? I never have. I don't. I can't. I can't speak for Wawa, but I know the cheats is better. Of course, producer Missy with us as well. She yes. has a camera this week. I don't know why you gave me a camera. Because I, I want to show camera. the people. I want to show the pre- people the producer booth and your sweet new <laughs> microphone arm. <laughs> Missy got a tree over there. Yeah, I've got a tree behind mm-hmm. me too. Um. Yes. And of course, our guest this week joining us, we uh, talked with him a little bit ago on the Indie Mayhem show, a good long discussion about wrestling, and he's with us to impart his knowledge. He is Marcus Mann, What's joining up? us here in studio. He's uh, with Rise Wrestling down in Connellsville, PA, that's been doing some crazy fun stuff lately and really kicking ass. Yeah, dude, I'm, uh, I don't think I could, I'm the perfect guest for episode 599. <laughs> Because I'm so close to being important, but I'm definitely not. It's just like, oh my god, I, I'm so close to being important, but no, I'm just, I'm just guess five ninety nine. It's all right. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us. Of course, I, we'll chat a little bit about what's going on with Ra- Rise Wrestling a little yeah. bit later in the show. A lot of great stuff there, and uh, thank you everybody that's been uh, sharing the stuff we've been sharing about the show as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, really fun things going on there. Of course, this is your Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything else at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including the Indie Mayhem Shows, including uh, the Raw Wrap-Ups, the Midweek Wars. Uh, some of those have been winding down for the end of the year, and uh, we'll be re- <coughs> rebooting here in 2018, and maybe one or two new things we might be working on as well uh you never know what's going to come out of uh, some new ideas and everything uh over the holiday break and of course remember next week is going to be our mayhem christmas special where we'll be doing wrestling mayhem show and indie mayhem show and that includes the stds and alcohol so you're going to definitely want out uh check out the live stream there and we will be starting early next week uh so you probably want to tune in around 8 30 9 o'clock for the live stream for wrestling mayhem show and uh but, again it'll be a double shot there as well what, what's up bobby but, Smack, but smackdown smackdown listen in the in the course of what we're going to be doing next week smackdown will not matter okay but what if Drew Gulak? <laughs> as it usually Unless, does <laughs> as it usually does <laughs> yeah that's true how many how, how long how many times have we actually had to uh get into smackdown here as an I important like point I, mean, I like smackdown it's nice what did you say as a concept no, as an idea, sorry. It's, I like SmackDown as, a, as an idea. Hashtag aspirational SmackDown. <laughs> uh, but anyways, check, also check us out again. Drop us a line at our email address. Good times. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show and 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. Tell us any thoughts on wrestling or if you want to submit a big question 
like we did last, uh, I think the last couple of weeks we've done that actually. Uh, you can do that there or just up uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. And of course, join our Facebook page, like it, and you'll get a notification when we do go live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time, except for the next several Tuesdays, and uh, or anything else we have going on uh, as well, and, and, and the events for the Indie Mayhem Show. I actually did not post. We just got booked today. Uh, Dylan Bostic will be joining us at 10 p.m. Eastern time, Wednesday night. Was that an applause? What's going on? That was over for there? me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan. Your new friend, uh, Bill, Dylan Bostic, that you got to yes. hang out with in uh, Rural Valley there. I gave him goosebumps. You did give him goosebumps. And we'll just leave it there and let your your minds race yes, at why that is. Mind. Why did Bobby give give him goosebumps? Well, we know how he got Chris LaRusso sick last week, so we'll just leave yeah. you with that. Uh, but anyway, that has effect on people. You do some some kind of effect, that's for sure. Usually uh, it's the flu. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> Uh, and of course, thanks to our streaming partners, partners, the 405media.com, where you can lull yourself to sleep with the sweet sounds of Wrestling Mayhem Show as it's on at midnight, seven days a week they replay us. Just leave it on the stream in the background and, and imagine the dreams you're about to have. Uh, and stay tuned for the political discourse. And stay, yeah, stay tuned for the political discourse afterwards. And of course, thank you to our Patreon supporters. You can uh, support us at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Literally keeping the lights on around here. Longest, uh, our longest uh, supporter, Bo Diggity! Woo! Uh, as well as Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town. That's you. Occupy hey, that's Pro me. at the five dollar hockey club level. They get the uh, Mayhem Show Gold. Uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling. Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop. And at the ten dollar Pizza Club level is Billy Effin Johnson. And check out all the levels and 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 we we'll have some goals here. I think at the beginning of the year as well at patreoncom slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. So first, uh, uh, oh geez, what do we touch on first? Let's talk two hundred five live. I, and, sure, I and, didn't watch it tonight. You, no, 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 I don't know. No, no, it doesn't matter if you watched it tonight, Bobby, because <laughs> okay. that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm up to speed then. <laughs> then. What's that? I'm up to speed then. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're, you're good. You're good. Uh, there was a big announcement this uh, uh, past week that 205 Live is going to do independent. What's it? I, don't, I think independent oh, yeah. is the right word yeah. we're talking about. Uh, independent from everything else, 205 Live is going to do house, show, house shows starting in January. Uh, the first set in uh, Kingston, Rhode Island, Lowell, Massachusetts, and Poughkeepsie, New York, January 19th through the 21st. Uh, Poughkeepsie, by the way, is going to be 10 minutes down the road from uh, our friend Mad Mike. So <laughs> hopefully we'll get a live report at this. Uh, we were talking about, uh, Marcus, we were talking about a good bit about 205 mm-hmm. Live beforehand. Yeah. Um, is it really strong enough to do its, I guess, uh, well, this is kind of a test, isn't it, to see if yeah. it is strong enough to draw its own crowd, right? Yeah, I mean, when it first started, I mean, it was definitely like a more concept than it was um, program, I mm-hmm. guess. I mean, the like when it first started, like, um, weren't they just on Raw? And then, like, like maybe three weeks later, they got their own show. It was, like, real quick that they, right, just, right. they just did the Raw thing. It was, like, Raw, like, hey, we have the cruiserweights, and we're going to purple everything up whenever they come out. Yeah, they stopped that, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Not too long ago. They did it for a while. They did it for a while, which I was, like... Uh, people don't give WWE crew enough credit to the fact that they can like do that as fast as they do. So anyway, but um, no, it. Whenever I watch any of the cruiserweight stuff, there's like guys I like, but there's so there's only like really ten of them total mm-hmm. that are like strong. Like okay, these guys can carry matches and do good stuff, and they've already all wrestled each other like a thousand times. Right. And if you don't and, have and Enzo, yeah. And if you don't have um, <laughs> Neville. Yeah, because I if he was an anchor for so long for them. If you don't have Neville, I guess they they brought they just brought Kent up for it mm-hmm. on his way. Yeah, so or a Tommy or Hideo Tommy, wherever his name is now. Um, I'm not sure really what you're going to get unique out of a house show. Like I like some of the cruiserweights. Like I love Noam Dar. Mm-hmm. I think he's awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, okay, on paper, this lineup is like the best indie show ever. Yeah, <laughs> so. but how many days in a row can they? I yeah. mean, are people really going to, I mean, I guess it really depends on size of arenas. I mean, are they trying to sell out mm-hmm. 8,000 seats? Are they trying to sell out 4,000 well, seats? Okay, think about this, too. You know, I, okay, also on paper, I don't think I've seen Cedric Alexander do a match, at least since CWC, yeah. that got me as excited as seeing him at AIW or yeah. at Chikara or at Super Indie, right? Yeah. So there's that thing, too, and, and we know that 
at the house shows, these guys get to cut loose a little bit. Yeah. So are these house shows of 205 Live going to at least what's in the ring feel a little bit more like what you and I know yeah. from seeing these guys all these years leading up to this? Yeah, and that's the thing. is like the those guys are way better live. Um, I remember, like, not a good example because he's not really cruiser weight, but, like, when I was a kid, I watched a lot of ECW, and I loved Rob Van Dam. Like, I loved Rob Van Dam. And then my first time seeing Rob Van Dam live, and he hit the five-star frog splash, I had seen it on TV for, like, seven years before I got to see him live, and you see it the first time, and you go, oh, my God, look how high he jumps. Like, until you see it live, you really don't understand how high this guy jumps or what he does. Mm -hmm. And the same thing can be said about guys like Cedric Alexander and um, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the cruiserweights that are, like, really high for high flyers. Because Cedric's, like, the best. Rich Swan. Like, yeah. you don't oh, really. Yeah. Like, Rich Swan's a guy that until you see live, you go, like, oh, I don't get it. Like, well, I mean, you get it, but, like, you don't really get it. Because mm -hmm. those guys fly all over the place, and they're so fast, and things are moving so quick. And until you see it live, you don't really get it. Um, so I think that could help them. But I, I, it depends on the arena size, really. I mean, if they're, like, because remember when ECW was doing those house shows? Um, the WWE CW. I, I, I laugh because uh, every once in a while my travels take me by the old Irish Center down there, like, mm -hmm. like, like by the Squirrel Hill Tunnel, and yeah. I remember, like, they did a WWE ECW show here. I didn't get to attend it, but yeah. I always heard about it, right? Like I did. I, I attended the one in Ross Traver. Yeah. When they did the Ice Garden yeah. or Ice Mine. It was, it, was, it was just Kelly Kelly's Extreme Expose in a building. It was, yeah. That's Man, all it was. I miss Kelly Kelly. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if they're doing those types of venues mm -hmm. and they're only like, hey, if we sell 2,000 well, to 4,000 yeah, well, tickets. Look at, that, look at NXT. Yeah. You know, they just did Stage AE. They're doing smaller venues in but how general. Much, how many tickets they sell at Stage AE? I don't know. Uh, I it wasn't a sellout this time. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't It wasn't as big and as crazy as what Ring of Honor was, right? Yeah. But it still was a fairly packed You were talking, house. what was it, like either last week or two weeks ago, I can't remember when I was watching, about how many, like, what Ring of Honor is selling out, like, what their ticket capacity is for each show. Like, right. their average tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the number. Right, because right they said the average. Like, um, like their their biggest show was, like, something like 3,500, and that was, like, a WrestleMania mm -hmm. or, you know, SummerSlam mm -hmm. weekend or something. And their average, I think, is up around 1,000 now. Yeah. I think as you said, so. like, like... I think it was like low 900s or something like that. I, if I, I don't remember. Like, yeah, I just yeah. remember it coming up in me. Like, but it used to be like me 600. E yeah, and me eating yeah. peanut butter sandwich going like, this is interesting. <laughs> um, but if that's what 205's trying to do is just get to that Ring of Honor level of like, mm -hmm. if we sell 4,000, that's a big show for us. Mm -hmm. I think it could be successful. If they're trying mm -hmm. to sell, you know, four or 5,000 tickets every show, it's going to fold quick. Well, mm -hmm. here's, here's a question, and I'm... Bringing this up because it's going on in the chat room right now. They're doing the Nia Jackson Enzo angle, mm -hmm. and Ugh. like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there, there's some different thoughts in regard sounds. to the the chat room. Poor um, Nia. Tina Tina actually is bringing up that they're rehashing the Eddie China for this generation. How is that going to play into like you were just talking mm -hmm. about the the appeal for me for 205 Live is the high flyers and the fast action. And they're, and they're putting storyline into it. Mm -hmm. well, and I mean, a ridiculous storyline at that. <laughs> but, I mean, this is this has been what they've been doing for a while is there's a lot of storyline with the good wrestling. You know, I mean, it's been very storyline heavy and I say sometimes interesting storylines. I mean, we all loved or had fun with at least Alicia Fox. Fox. And Noam Dar, Alicia right? Fox. So I think I, I can't say it's the best wrestling storytelling on television by any you means. Know, you know how they're going to book 4,000? Hmm. They're going to covertly set it up as a business convention. <laughs> Get people in the doors for Drew Gulak's three-hour PowerPoint presentation and just sneak matches in between. Yeah, they could definitely sell out like a Holiday Inn Express <laughs> uh, near, the ho near the airport. That'd be amazing, actually. <laughs> That'd be great. Can we just do that sometime? Yeah. You guys need just any more Drew's food? PowerPoint presentation. You guys <laughs> need any more buffet items, cokes? Anyone? We, we, our, our friends, <laughs> our friends from Awesome Cast work for 
um, some some large establishments downtown here in Pittsburgh, and they came uh, one day with all of this uh, Office 365 swag. Mm-hmm. And I just I just and we know PowerPoint has yeah Missy's got some of it over there. Uh, she's in <laughs> Office Actually, if you, if you would like a medium Office 65 t-shirt, anybody that stops by, please take it. I've been trying to get rid of it for I'll three months. I'll take it, but it's not going to fit. <laughs> Bobby's new belly shirt. I keep, I keep dropping, like sausage, I keep dropping a the still of Marcus in the chat room for some reason. That's awesome. I'll be a sausage in a casing. Oh, okay. There's that visual that's out there for everybody. Um, <laughs> By the way, did someone in the chat actually compare Enzo to Eddie Guerrero? What? Uh, when Tina, Tina was talking about the rehash of Eddie China, yeah. so yes, uh, that comparison. Mm. I think it was more the storyline <laughs> in and of itself. That's, I'm going that's, that way. That's the bigger problem there, mm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> not even close. But still, I I, I, I get the point. But I, I like that they're they're experimenting with this. I mean, well, we, I don't even know where because they only did like one little quick thing, mm-hmm. I, unless they did something tonight and I didn't see it. Because why would I watch two hundred five live? Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, unless Noam Dar is the star of it. That, I love Noam Dar. He's my favorite cruiserweight, mm-hmm. and he doesn't really even do that anything like crazy impressive. No, no. I just, uh, when Noam Dar debuted, I was like, if I was a professional wrestler, that's what I would have wanted to be, is Noam Dar. Is the, like, is the Scottish Supernova? Dude, he's like straight <laughs> Liam Gallagher, and I'm like, he's the, I just think he's so cool. I'm like a huge <laughs> Noam, Noam Dar guy. He's a champagne Supernova. Yeah, man. He has a, uh, he was the champagne superstar for a while. Really? That was one of, he, had oh, really? a, he had the jacket, and then if you see any huh. of his um, gear, he uses like the Oasis font with like the line through it and stuff. Like, yeah, there's I a see. lot of Liam Gallagher and Oasis ha- stuff. I can't think that I have ever seen him in the Indies. Like, uh, he didn't. I don't think over here there was much. It was a lot in Scotland and Britain yeah. and stuff like that, but like not a lot over here. That's what I've always loved about like you know even the UK tournament stuff. You know, there that is a complete alien world to me. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, unless they've been brought over for something like Chikara, like, yeah. you know, uh, Pete. Yeah, like Pete Dunne and, and Mandrews, like, um, they had done some stuff at T- TNA, and, like, they. They came through IWC. It was, like, a week yeah. after the tournament where I'm like, yeah. oh, shit, Where's I met these guys that? before. Yeah. Oh, shit, we interviewed these they, guys. They did, a, you know? they did a spot at uh, PWX, mm-hmm. which uh, is a story I'll have to tell you another time. But because uh, <laughs> uh, they were living with Ricky Shane Page, mm-hmm. and Ricky had come in and was doing some stuff with us uh, when I was there. And they were the, I mean, super nice. Oh, super yeah. Tiny, though. Mm-hmm. And then you see them, like, you see Pete Dunne now, and you're like, and you look the, like a different person And completely. that's the biggest thing, because you see them, and they, they don't look absolutely anything. And it wasn't that many years ago, right? No. So. No, they were, uh, like I said, they lived with Ricky for, God, maybe a year? It was a while they were living with Ricky. Ricky's got great stories about them, too. They still text them. Um, have you heard that Ricky told a story about Pete Dunne? was over in doing a show in England and they were like a WWE show for the UK thing when he was cha- and then um, he was supposed to do a progress show that same day and Triple H was like well I want you to do that progress show like I don't want you to miss it and he's like well, what am I supposed to do and Hunter was like we'll get the helicopter here's a- actually and like <laughs> helicoptered him from from the <laughs> WWE show to a progress show so he wouldn't miss it Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> this is the time we had Riz doing interviews. So Riz got to interview oh, the geez. future uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> UK so every cool. age, heavyweight champion at Court Times Sports <laughs> Center uh, uh, some several years ago. In 2013, they were here. Yeah, at least for the they IWC. came in and I, we were watching them. And, I, and We were sitting there watching the match because we don't know these kids from anybody. Mm-hmm. They're just two kids that came with Ricky Shane Page. Mm-hmm. And they're starting out and I'm watching it with Pollock and they're doing like this like catch wrestling. And we're like, this catch stuff is pretty cool, man. These guys are pretty good. Like, they're not bad. And they only had, like, I think, like, six minutes. And they did, like, four minutes of catch stuff. And you're like, oh, man, is this going to be the whole match? And then all of a sudden, they just started throwing out everything. Mm -hmm. Just top rope stuff, backflips. And you're like, oh, my God. Like, these kids are in, in, like, they were going to get everything in in their six minutes. Um, They're, like, awesome. They were, like, awesome in 2013. And then... Now they're like astronomically good. There's sorry. There's a uh, uh, who's this say this in here? Uh, Alex. Alex. No, no. Tina says uh, there's a lot of stuff. No, no. That's something. Here it is. Uh, there's a cool match between Gnome and Finn as Darth Maul out there. Oh yeah, I heard about that one. Where Finn was doing all sorts of cool body, like body mm-hmm. paints back then. Mm-hmm. I yeah, did yeah. hear about that. I've not seen that match. I'll definitely have to look that up. Gnome Dor is like, hey, he's just so cool, dude. Jeez. He's, he's cooler than Finn Balor. That's some good stuff. Don't at me. Don't at me. Don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but anyways, uh, so so two hundred five live. We'll we'll see what's going on there. And uh, it, it, I went way it, off topic. It, it would be cool if it, if, if two hundred five became an independent NXT level. Yeah. You know, and, and really WWE is just. I mean, that's where the money is. Is the tour. Yeah. You know, that's why, I mean, mm-hmm. NXT was going to two places on the same night, at least mm-hmm. when it was here in Pittsburgh. I think they had another one in Texas. Like, we didn't get, like, Johnny Gargano. Mm-hmm. We didn't get uh, uh, Billy Kay, which made Bobby really, really, I'm really so sad. Mad. Really sad. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce both. No Nikki Cross. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is kind of like an no old... Kyrie Sane. This was kind of like the old strategy they ran in, like, the l- early 80s. When they did they three were, shows, when didn't they, they? Yeah, when they would do, like... Um, ABC shows, ABC shows in um, different in different towns. So like the A shows were like the bigger ones where Hogan was going to be on, and then like your B shows, you may have got like a hacksaw or something like that, and like mm-hmm. so on down the line. So I mean, and they were like, I mean, that's when they were tripling their money in cities because they were running so many shows, and like if that's the strategy they're going to do again of mm-hmm. like. You know, well, you, they they got so C much shows talent. Are, yeah, C shows are two two hundred five live. B towns are yeah. um, NXT, and then A show or A towns are where you're getting Raw so, and SmackDowns, like and like running all different all over the country at one night. Mm-hmm. That would solve a lot of the problems of having like because they're having attendance issues like at other venues. Mm-hmm. You could triple your attendance in one night if you're running three different towns. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I mean, minus the overhead for individual venues, but still. Well, if you're if you're running house shows for those guys, and you don't have to bring in all the selling, stuff and selling that merch, and, maybe I don't know. know. It's a smaller setup. And, yeah. I mean, and if you're only trying to get four thousand, you know, and you're paying those guys anyway, mm-hmm. you know, well, it, it's not like the days of WCW where they had a hundred people deep roster and yeah. just running a regular line of shows, right? Well, and, and if, if, if even house shows at one point. And if I'm Vince McMahon and Triple H and all these guys sitting around a table and you look at this roster. You're sitting there going like, well, we're paying these guys. What are we doing with them? Yeah. And just because you don't see people on Raw for several weeks, like like uh, Dolph was on Edge and Christian podcast talking about how yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah, you don't see me on TV and I don't do anything and I always lose. But then I can go tear down the house of Bobby Roode in the first match of, of a show. I think we were talking about Starcade, for mm-hmm. instance, you know. And, you know, he's like, he's like, I'm having a blast out there. Mm-hmm. Even though they're not doing anything with me on TV. I know they'll call me up when they need me to do a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like feels secure in that yep. and they don't want him to leave. Yep. So, I mean, it's a, 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 you know, he wants to be the guy on top, but in the meantime, he's having a lot of fun on these house shows. They're kind of their mm-hmm. indie fun shows uh, that, that they can do for now. Yeah. So uh, it, it's, an, it's, it, it, it's interesting to see that. And, and, and again, for the NXT, it makes sense because they have so many, Jeez. like they have so much talent you haven't seen yet. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. you would not have noticed them because they were just, Maybe a jobber, or they got beat up by Lars Sullivan or something. <laughs> Everybody's like, they took like half the roster away in the women's division. I was like, did you watch the Make Young Classic? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many more do they have waiting in the wings just to swoop right in there? And just because they didn't sign everybody from a CWC yeah. or the May Young Classic doesn't mean they're not. They don't still have them in the Rolodex. Oh yeah, right. Like um, Jesse uh, Gabbert. Yeah, all like <laughs> all of those people they still have, and like um. I haven't watched the NXT in a while. Did um did they fully debut Kimberly yet there? Abby Lane? Mm, not really. She's, she's had a few matches. She's been on. Yeah, she, she's been on here She's and there. like when they start pulling people up, I was like, if she yeah. hasn't fully debuted, she's gonna be in the mix. I mean, she's yeah. been like I think they've had a few matches like, oh, and here's Abby Lath from the May, May Young yeah. Classic and, and and having a better match than just a, a job match, yeah, but but, still, but not, she'll she's still not. She's easily my favorite mm-hmm. on the entire roster of any woman wrestling. I think she's, if if she gets a chance to break out, she's going to do it. Mm-hmm. I think she's amazing. I think she had the some of the best matches in the tournament on that May Young. And they've been doing stuff like, mm-hmm. there's been articles on WWE.com about her wrestling Cesaro back in the day, yeah. things like that, being yeah. a being a main mm. champion with Chikara and everything. It, it, so, like that stuff is happening. So you know, it, it could be you know cause something could come from that. So, um, but hey, I want to give a shout out uh, before we go on. We have a couple other some uh, fun topics to get to here. But first, uh, shout to our friends Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right up the road here in Beachview, as well as their other locations at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Carnegie PA, as well as their new location in East Liberty. And I know you guys have been sending me pictures and tweets of the new location. So glad that it's on 
your side of town now. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for those guys for supporting the Mayhem Show. Thank you, everybody out there, for supporting them back and talking about it online. And and thank you that I have not had any reports from our friends at Slice on Broadway that anybody has kicked down their door to get in and yelled the Mayhem sent me. Uh, but second part's okay. Don't kick down the door, please. Yeah, don't kick down yeah, Just the door. gently, yeah, maybe. But uh, check them out. Thanks a lot. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Sork. Twitter. Sork. Yes. I have an awesome I have an awesome thing of the week and it pertains to pizza. That's the wrong podcast. Oh. Could I can I still say it? Sure. They have sandwich bags that are strictly for pizza now. Oh. They sell them on big meat. They're awesome. I just wanted to, I just wanted to say they have made pizza bags. Carry on. And now back to wrestling talk. <laughs> Jeez. Um so there was this art uh, there, there was a video that was shared by a friend of the show, uh, DJ Z. What? I just saw Dave Podner's comment, and the bacon pizza is worth kicking the door down. Oh. <laughs> of course. Uh, but anyways, uh, there was an article uh, shared by a uh, friend of the show, uh, DJ Z, a few days ago that's been making the rounds. And I've been having fun, and I made sure to tag some of our local uh, uh, people here in town. So Mooch... Mucho, Lond- uh, Mucho Lucha, I believe it is, out in Milwaukee at a public library had a show in the library. This is part of a uh, promotional uh, uh, thing that they're doing in, in that library system. Uh, I, I just thought that was the coolest thing to see, just the wrestling ring and them going at it in a library. And and that, and, that, and if you if you watch the article, they said, well, what's next for this campaign? And it's, uh, I think it's... Uh, 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 Library Loud is the campaign or something like that. And they said next they're going to have a, uh, a petting zoo. What? So, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, man, I want, I want that library in my town. I know, right? Well, hey, our, our library, there's DJ Z right there. And I love that because he did that. And, and, the, and the guy's like, well, how'd you come up with this? He's like, because I'm a DJ. And he's like, <laughs> excellent. Like, un- completely no-sold him, unimpressed. Yeah. Like, geez, like that's, <laughs> come on. Uh, but no, it was a lot of fun. It, and like I said, I tagged our local library system that I might have done some work with. And uh, and, and I told you know, any other nonprofits, hey, there's some people that they just went. may know how to book shows in your area. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, just we, throw I'm, the title I, up there. I'm a uh, huge library supporter. Hmm. I, I, uh, I live uh, over in like the Lawrenceville area, and I have one like right by my house. Oh, oh, you got that really cool old one, right? Yeah, yeah. I love it over there. It's I, I was over there because I was over there for the Bucky Palermo mm-hmm. talk that they they did. Yeah, it was amazing. It was a cool old library, I and they've been updated. I don't think people realize in in the Pittsburgh area how lucky they are with the library system that we have. Mm-hmm. It's actually like a very very great library system. Um, and I used I remember um, I was trying to convince Matt Connor to move to Pittsburgh. He was living in West Virginia. I was like, you have to move to Pittsburgh. And he's like, well, yeah, this or that. And I was like, dude, you have no idea how good the library is. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, like DVDs, comic books, like they have everything. I I read like almost all my comic books out of there now. Yeah. Like I don't even carry Marvel Unlimited because they have everything. Yeah. It's and then if they don't have it at the library, you want it. They'll just bring it over. Yep. It's on the road. Right on the road. It's amazing. The the library system in Pittsburgh is phenomenal. Yeah. And it's been that way for since I've got here. So there you go. Carnegie library. If you need some wrestling, we'll work it out. Make sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We know people, we know people that can do that. Sorg. Hmm. Dave Podner is uh, asking you about a live show up in Michigan at formula. SAE after the testing. (laughs) If you guys are interested at SAE, um, actually I'm wearing their shirt right now. Uh, (coughs) I'm actually wearing. I'm actually wearing my Michigan shirt. Actually, underneath your Captain America. Yeah, shirt, after yes. underneath the Captain America. But uh, Castle. Jeez, I don't even know. Like getting a bunch <laughs> of engineer kids, and and just dropping a wrestling match in the middle of uh, in the middle of actually. Dave, we can probably find a wrestling show. We are near Detroit, so that's true. And there's a lot of wrestlers up there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. Of um, that's where that's where I saw the circus wrestling show. The one time. Yeah, I think um, Truth Martini's still running up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is he running shows? I know he has a school. I know he's in school, but I don't, I, he, might, I mean, he might be doing, like, appearing on a show here or there. Rhino's been doing a promotion. Oh, is he? Yeah. Well, I, well, I don't know if it's still running. Well, I, well he's been in WWE, but 
Yeah. Uh, because I remember when he was doing stuff with IWC, he was talking about how they were starting the promotion. Okay. And he was very much like, it's just to help this VFW. Oh, wow. Up there. And like, that was the, like, you know, he's the name. Maybe he'll okay. bring in somebody. But that's all he was doing was, was trying to fill his VFW and, 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 you know, help it out. So just don't get him to personalize an autograph. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bobby has history with Rhino. Uh, <laughs> Some 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 made up in his. I know some I, real, some made up in his head. I only know him as Mis, yeah. Mr. Noceros. Mr. Noceros. Yeah. He once stole my tricycle in a dream. Yes, <laughs> I would just leave it at that. Um, yeah. For those ever, there's Border City Wrestling just over the border, of course. Mm-hmm. Also available on IndieWrestling.us. Um, a couple shows. We didn't get much of their catalog, but we got a couple shows. Uh, but anyways. Some other stuff going on out there. Uh, this was sad to see, but I guess kind of makes sense. Jim Johnston has been released from WWE. Uh, mm. Now, that name may sound familiar if you looked at the, the I don't know, the, the credits for any music done since the 80s, practically, that wasn't Jimmy yeah. Hart. Uh, and, and, of course, I know we've, we've kind of made fun of the C Money F-O, CF Money-O. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, he's doing... a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Is he? Well, yeah, one of them. Uh, he, he has like the hat on and the thing in the video they did. Nice, but they, you know, doing a lot of a lot of the you know later music. You know, again, Asuka, uh, AJ Styles. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, basically it, about everything that's been popping up on iTunes lately. Yeah. So. And 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 I think s- somebody was telling me, I forget where it was, but somebody was telling me about like he he's been on kind of a a like they've been kind of he did this uncaged redo of stuff that has not yeah. been on CD mm. or digital digitized before of WWE music. And uh, the, so you can, f- I know I came across it on, on Google music before and it's on iTunes and some of it is like kind of more rock versions of like of, of, of stuff that's been out. Uh, and I guess they're just, uh, he, he's been at this for three decades with WWE, mm-hmm. you know, it, it has really <laughs> kind of been behind the sound of WWE for so long. Like we were talking about in the, in the, ride back from nxt just i remember as a kid just sitting listening to tatanka's theme and razor ramon's theme and just wearing out the cassette tape that i had by fast forwarding rewinding or not fast forwarding playing it and rewinding it constantly just back and forth those two songs even if there were other songs on that I, those were the two that i listened to the most just classic stuff Jeez, yeah i don't the thing with jim johnson now is This is going to sound terrible because the guy has been so influential to so many people's lives Mm -hmm. in a way that we don't like you don't really comprehend like until you understand the feelings you get when The Undertaker walks out is because of Jim Johnson before The Undertaker even walks out. Jim Johnson has already given you the feel like Mm -hmm. he's so influential, you know, but Um, in this day and age, do they need him anymore? Because, like, when you hear the stories about, like, Bray Wyatt's song, about how he found it in a music catalog that they had, they had just bought this song from these from this band, mm-hmm. they had sold it, and then he'd searched through the catalog, and he found it, and was like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll use that. The way that there's so much music out there, and you can just buy catalogs now and stuff, and then you can find, if you just search through a database digitally, something that just fits you... Do you need a guy who's going to sit and make you a custom thing really anymore? Um, I I don't know, um, but uh, it's sad to see a guy who, like I said, if you're a wrestling fan, he's touched your life probably more times than your favorite wrestler ever did. You know, he's he's that influential in everything he's done. Him and Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart doesn't get enough credit for the early years and what he did with music as well. No, absolutely. Absolutely, he 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 was like all the best stuff in WCW. Yeah, and you can tell like you can tell the Jimmy Hart stuff in WCW because it like all sounds the same. <laughs> I mean, in a good way though. Right? Like it has yeah, like yeah. the same like feel like to yeah. a lot of them. Um, WCW music never competed with Jim Johnson stuff though. Like when you would hear WWF themes and guys come out, and then you just heard like. The most American generic, males. yeah, American males <laughs> are like American males, like those American types males. of WCW <laughs> themes that just were like uh, the Sting one's my favorite, and we play it all the time. Like my friends will send it to it. My favorite line is in the Sting one is literally he does this 
He does that. That's a line. He does this and that. Yeah, if you listen to it, he's a man called Sting. There's yeah, there's a line. It's like he does this, he does I, that, I, and you go, "What? I don't. Who's writing this? Who thought I that Sting. was lyrics? Maybe Sting wrote his own music. Maybe like like he was the early John Cena." <laughs> they asked him in an interview, Sting, <laughs> what do you do? Oh, you know, this and that. Yeah, you know, this, I do that. Oh, yeah, write that down. That. Write that down. <laughs> Keep it. Make, Keep it. Make sure to put that in his entrance music so we hear it forever. Jeez. I miss Sting's uh, WCW Crow music, though, and WWE dropped the ball by not using it. Yeah, is it something that maybe they didn't get rights to? Well, they, I, I mean, they kind of used it for the commercial. So yeah, he came back with, he came back with the Sergeant Pepper's coat. <laughs> uh, you know what? People were like, people complained about that, but that felt so Sting. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. that felt like Sting was always weird with that. Like, once the Crow character kind of ended and Sting started talking again, it was just like just Sting again. Mm-hmm. And there was Joker Sting in TNA, which <sighs> yeah. What was that? Some people, <laughs> some some people, I, I've heard people say like, "Oh, that was that was actually some really good stuff." He I was didn't doing. watch it. I didn't either. It was just like, <laughs> "What? What is? What is this thing stuff? What, yeah. what are you doing? Like, it, 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 how much of your career career has to be very obvious takes off of popular things? Yeah, yeah. Doing, he, you know. he was just doing this and that. You know, <laughs> this and that. <laughs> you know, a little bit of this." movie a little bit of that movie that he yeah. saw recently like like is it like are those the only two movies he saw yeah. maybe <laughs> yeah. was it the story that like the 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 crow wasn't even his idea was it, it wasn't like scott hall it was like something. scott hall's idea he's like you dress like the crow and he's like all right like, sting's whole career was based yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give him credit though that sting has at least watched two current movies because vince mcmahon still doesn't know what pirates of the caribbean is so Give Sting a little credit. Hey, the wrestling world gets insulated a little bit. I know. Uh, what were know. we? T- I don't even know how we got all. Oh, Jim Johnson. <laughs> That's where we were at. Jim Johnson. Um, but no, like even now, like when you watch, like I watch TNA, uh, not often. Is it Impact? I don't know what it's called. Um, and like I was watching when like Angle was on there, mm-hmm. and then Kurt Angle would come out, and you go, "Man, this music sounds bogus." Like none of it. It never felt big league. Like, Jim Johnson made every WWE superstar uh, trademark patent pending on that term uh, (laughs) feel (laughs) like they were a big star. Like, every song felt big. Every package that they used. Like, um, good example. I don't know if you wrote it. I have to look it up. But, like, um, oh, God, I just had his name. Uh, Carlos Colon. What was the uh, uh, Carlito. Carlito's song was so perfect for him. And he's such a character that you yeah. don't really remember. But all of those run-ups, all of those vignettes that they face. did with him. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was perfect. And it just felt like him. And then, like, think about, like, Carlito at TNA or what his song would have sounded like. And it would have sounded like... Generic. Yeah, it's just generic, like, Puerto Rican music that would've, he would have came out well, to. It's like when I saw, like, like TNA, like, here and there have had, like, a, an album out of their music. I'm just like, why? Yeah. Really? What? No. I mean... WCW suffered that problem. I, we will we'll, we'll rewatch like WCW pay reviews, and you hear like real generic music, and you're like, oh, "Come on, like this is this is a star." Just, no, 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 no. They did overdub a lot of those. They did, but I remember the themes that like like Dean Malenko never had a good theme. No, 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 no. No, uh, like even the Four Horsemen theme was kind of like, like, eh. yeah, yeah. It's just kind of some guitar riffs. I'm just still thinking. They just they never bought just, into the idea of the music being. An integral part. It no. was so throwaway. No. Now, I don't know if it was just the production or it was because yeah. everybody was so old school there. Think about Eddie Guerrero's music in WCW. I can't. It, it's very generic. It's half the time yeah. when you watch it, they've dubbed over Latino Heat. <laughs> no, no, I'm thinking his WCW stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. They'll dub over I mean, the, you, the, the, the you, WWE well, stuff no, no, with no. it. Yeah. Have you watched an ECW pay-per-view where yeah. they've dubbed over, yeah. like, Break the Walls Down for Chris Jericho? Yeah. It's get, so bullshit. I get why yeah. they're doing it, though. Yeah. Because they don't want to pay them. Yeah, I know, but... The it, best is watching WCW pay-per-views when Hogan comes out because they don't want to pay for Voodoo Child. Oh, yeah. So they just dub in the NWO music, and yeah. then you see Hogan clearly mouthing the words to Voodoo Child. It's yeah. fucking down. It makes me so sad. 
It makes me so um, sad. DDP is was, good, too. That was my favorite stuff. Oh, yeah. Was him coming out the voodoo child. Nothing's better than uh, NWO porn music going on where Hogan is, is singing Chop my, with the back of my hand, like <laughs> doing the stuff to just NWO music. <laughs> Well, you guys, there, there are some comments coming in from the chat room as people mm -hmm. are going through some things. Um, Paul comments that Joker Sting was Sting's midlife crisis. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm still thinking about Sting gimmicks. Yeah, Aaron uh, Sting's <laughs> crow theme is in WWE 2K18. Yeah, so they own it. Why aren't they using it? Why didn't I, they use it? I but didn't they do you. that promo with, with it as an orchestra? Yeah. In like the in, for the game he, for the video game yeah, yeah they did and then so he comes out to it. he comes out to mania does like not that song yeah mm -hmm. yeah they gotta make it better yo and then he comes he wrestles Seth uh, Rollins to the like the same BS tune and mm -hmm. Alex, next year mania Alex Miller oh, is also chiming in that he loves AJ Styles get ready to fly theme. I don't even remember it. Get ready to fly. Boom, 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 boom. That was the TNA one. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if I uh, heard the it, the one that just says "I am, I am" like oh, a bunch. Oh, that's that's yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Alex also follows that up that he had that AJ had great themes in TNA. All of them are better than his WWE theme. Uh, uh, no. hey, hey, his hey, his hey, WWE hey, theme is is so AJ them? Styles mm -hmm. of a mix of like. Some kind of rap, but like some kind of like gospel y stuff. Like, that's who AJ makes Styles reference, Makes reference to him being a redneck. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that's Ain't Alan James. <laughs> that is like him as a human being yeah, in it a is. song so, form. It, is. it actually is. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. The like, gay community. <laughs> <laughs> like, he is. Yeah. That's when you first, I first heard it, I was like, Man, I don't know if I like this. Mm -hmm. And then you like hear it all the way through, and you're like, "Yeah, he he definitely was like integral in me. Like, this is what I want." And you're like, "All right, dude, it's not bad." Like, the more you hear it, the the more okay it is. Yeah, it just kind of grows on you. Can, mm -hmm. can I can I just say that um, I want Sting now to to come out against the Undertaker after he watched Lord of the Rings as Gandalf. Oh jeez, <laughs> is his next gimmick. Oh, you shall geez. not pass. Sting, the, sting the gray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a new gimmick. He's just gonna sting be a wizard gray, now. He's had so many He's color bases. Take it one step further. I mean, Sting as a <laughs> as a wizard isn't close to the isn't far off from the Undertaker. Who like, if you describe yeah, the Undertaker's character, is just like, oh, he's a zombie wizard, and he oh, shoots lightning. <laughs> He is. He's a zombie wizard. He shoots <laughs> lightning bolts out of his hand, and he's undead and accurate. <laughs> Human sacrifices were a part of his gimmick for a while. He was a zombie wizard. He was. You know? He was. Yeah. Who built his own coffins. Wow. Then he was a, he's then also he was a, he he's was a, a carpenter. <laughs> wait a minute. He's a zombie wizard carpenter. He he's, was. Jesus. Then, wait, wait. <laughs> then there was wait. that strange time that he was a biker wait. that we forget about. If he's a wizard, didn't he just conjure? Why would he have to carpenter? Because he, he also has work ethic. And yeah, he likes working with his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He relaxes him. He relaxes him. Woodworking. I remember. Do you remember hey, those promos when he made. built like uh, Yokozuna's coffin, like hey, the double wide hey, coffin? Hey, look at this oh, chair God. I made. I mean, I mean, I, no, I'm not gonna get religious. Uh, all right, we got thing. some other things to talk about here, including. What else do you have to talk about? Sorry? Uh, well, there's a list, probably. Well, there, there is, is a, a list. list. People, some stuff that includes some, well, some, some, some characters coming back, and maybe something going away in independent pro wrestling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in, in the meantime, you can check out some of our friends. A lot of great stuff going over at IndieWrestling.us. We talked about last week. Our friends at CKCW joined us uh, on the service. All four of their shows are available right now. You can check them out. Uh, and a few people have been picking those up. I really appreciate the support there. This uh, newer promotion up in the Cleveland area, as well as uh, some other great guys up in Cleveland, our uh, Premier Championship Wrestling and Walter Weight Wrestling friends. And right here in the uh, Pittsburgh area, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, IWC, and a lot of other great stuff, including Stomp Out Cancer, including uh, the DBI, uh, several of their shows uh, that uh, support the support the uh, some great uh, uh, groups out there. So please go check it out, IndieWrestling.us. You can check out the back interviews for, uh, of course, uh, Indie Mayhem Show and a lot of great indie wrestling stuff going on there. Uh, shows, shows as, as cheap as $2.99. 
including a lot of that back catalog. Some good 10-year-plus shows. I remember I was pointing up a couple weeks ago. Um, shows, somebody's messaging me. Uh, shows from 2003 IWC. Really? Yep. So, I was I was going to those shows. You were going? So maybe you can find Marcus Mann in the crowd. You could probably find me sitting next to a unbearded Jack Pollock. Wow. At some wow. some 2003 IWC shows over at uh, CCAC. So, I, finally, un- I, that, I don't did, did Jack Pollock exist before his beard? <laughs> it's like a chicken and egg question. Yes. yes. Good question. Good question. Um, um we're, we're going to leave it to to the folks out there to go watch some of those shows and mm-hmm. treat it like a where's Waldo and take screen caps if you and can, show us if you can find them in the sh- in the crowd. If you can find us. Maybe Waldo will be in there. Unbearded Jack Pollock and I had shoulder length long hair. Whoa. So wow. look for us. Whoa. And look f- <laughs> if you find the dude yelling at Samoa Joe, give him the stink oh, face that's Rikishi. Bad <laughs> Jack Pollock yelled at Samoa Joe, give him the stink face Rikishi. Uh, to which <laughs> Samoa Joe replied, "What the hell did you just say to me?" And then Whoa. Jack Pollock laughed. Please very tell hard. me. Please tell me that was an accept no limitation shows. If so, we completely have that on there. Ah, uh, it might have been. Um, did you see you made Sorry, Jason take us a challenge. Whoa, yeah, Bobby's getting. Bobby needs to do that unplug thing again. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I popped in an old, I, I feel like I've said this on the show, mm-hmm. an old Ring of Honor, like women of Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. And it was, oh, geez, it was like, it was Mickey James, pre Mickey James yeah. and somebody. And I'm looking and I was like, first match on the, on the two disc set mm-hmm. is from Pittsburgh, like maybe 2004 ish. Okay. And I'm looking at the top of the bleachers is a, uh, Eric ecstasy. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, like those old shows, especially like those, um, Ring of Honor, IWC, like, they weren't like crossover shows, but like Ring of Honor will come in and use like a lot of IWC stuff. Yeah. If you look in the crowd, you can find so many of your favorite like it, like Pittsburgh legends. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. like you'll always find um, Jake Garrett walking around uh, because <laughs> oh, something is going wrong, and Jake Garrett has to figure it out. Oh, nothing's changed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, I never knew Jake Garrett as a wrestler. Yeah, I knew him as that guy that was always at the shows judging everything. Yes, <laughs> so, just Jake. <laughs> and yeah. then just, and I found out, you know. Uh, <laughs> but you can always find like Jake or Eric X is always easy to spot because he's bald. Yeah. Um. Yes. But idols always around. Like you'll see those guys like mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. background, and you're like, oh wait a minute, that, that's that guy. I, I think it'd be interesting to look back because you can definitely on some of those shows. I know you'll be able to find a young Elias. Drifting through, you'll find him as staff. <laughs> yeah, uh, during a, for at least from when I was starting IWC, I think it was when he was training facade. Mm-hmm. You can't miss facade with the hair. You can't miss uh, Gory because he looks exactly the same. Yes, like his, oh, he has yeah. the, he, like he looks exactly. He has the same. not aged. No. At all. No. You can always find Gory somewhere, too. It, it is amazing when you're like, oh, that guy's been in the business for like ten years, and you're like, like shit, really? Yeah. And so. he looks the exact same. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you can see um, DJ Z's giant afro. Yes. <laughs> He did. <laughs> he had that big, like, curly afro hair. You can he, always yeah. find him, too. Because he could spray paint it. He, or uh, spray, spray, yeah. spray uh, uh, oh, yeah. the yep. hair. All right. Jeez. Uh, we'll be back after this with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Wrestling Mayhem Show back again. Marcus Mann still hanging with us of Rise Wrestling. Oh, yeah. am I supposed to say something? Yeah, yeah. Say, hey, Rise yeah, is up? keen. <laughs> is, that, is that our catchphrase? <laughs> it is now. I mean, you, I mean, you never know. You know, yeah. you need something new for 2018, right? Yeah, season two. Season two. Wait, is it, you're doing seasons? I wanted to so bad. Yeah. And then, like, Brandon's like, we're not going to do anything cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Wow. And the truth comes out in the second half. Uh, uh, what's going on with Rise Wrestling? You guys just had your uh, first anniversary show, of course. Yeah, it was on Saturday. Yeah. Um, oh, man. I was around. Yeah, you were there for it. <laughs> I was, I was oh, man, I had, uh, we had such a blast. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really, really awesome to see uh, so many people come out and support us for that show. One of the big, uh, biggest crowds we've had in that building. Um Top to bottom, I, I couldn't have been happier with everything. Um, Duke uh, Davis and Brandon Kay had one of the most, like, one of the best matches I've, I've been a part of. 
Um, and then Lee Moriarty and Matt Connor to like had to follow that in a main event. And oh yeah, the table. Oh man, that table bump was unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw him pull it out, and I said to Missy, I was like, oh, that table's going to be rough. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just, I've just i seen enough of them yeah. that I'm just like, why did we pick that one? Yeah. yeah. Um, Matt and Lee tore it down. They had to follow that match and did a phenomenal job. Mm-hmm. And I'm super proud of um, everyone on the show, but specifically uh, Christian Black and Lyndon Ali did a last competitor standing match, uh, breaking some gender barriers there uh, with an intergender last person standing and killed it. Those guys did an amazing job. We were so happy with all of it. Um, we're coming back January 13th. We got some uh, some time here before we're back. Um, uh, crowned our first champion. There's Lee Moriarty, our first first ever champion for the company at our anniversary show. Um, couldn't have picked um, couldn't, a better uh, representative of the company. Uh, Lee is really, really humble, really smart. Uh, here's a story about Lee that you'll know. This kid is in the main event to crown the first champion at our anniversary show. And we are backstage right before, and we get word. They go, you need to put out more chairs. Like, we have more people coming in. And Lee comes back and goes, hey, we got to put out more chairs. We're like, okay, great. Lee starts grabbing chairs to go put out. (laughs) And we're like, no, silly rabbit. You're in the main event tonight. Um, That's how humble that kid is. That he was like, I'm like... Oh, I'll put chairs out. And you're like, no, you got, you have a thing to do tonight. Like, don't, you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Humble, smart, hungry as hell, man. That kid is hungry to do something now. Um, And I, and Matt Connor too, um, friend of the show. He's been on a couple times. Both of those guys. Matt is so underrated and, and just one of the smartest wrestling people I've ever met and just a great competitor. And uh, him and Lee, um, man, they killed it. That was a great main event. Up and down, great. Um, AIW had some representation there um, with uh, Dr. Dan, Dr. Dan C. Rock. I Is have, that your first I, time seeing Dr. That Dan, That was my right? first time seeing Dr. Dan. And I remember, like, I saw, I saw the slide come up, and I read it, and, 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 and I, asked, I asked Matt about it next to me. Yeah. And it was not, not Matt Carlin, it's another Matt. And uh, he's just like, yeah, so, something about, he, he told me something about, like, yeah, it's kind of like a power, the PowerPoint pres- presentation, but, yeah. but but somebody else is doing that as it's like, Oh, that's weird. Yeah. And it was, it was a PowerPoint presentation type of thing. He's doing yeah. a self-help thing. Yeah. He's got pamphlets yes. and I'm just like, this shouldn't work. Yeah. And it worked so after well. doing like a last man standing match. This guy comes out and works over the crowd. Yeah. It was so good. He is, he's so underrated and he's, and uh, he's works at AIW and, um, Trained by Johnny Gargano in Castle Ray. Mm-hmm. So he's smart. He gets it. And he understands, like, how to do it. And then the PowerPoint ends up getting hacked. The only guy, like, of course, in the Rise world, the guy who runs the audiovisual department is Lewis. Mm-hmm. Uh, our who resident is nerd. basically Revenge of the Nerds <laughs> as a wrestler, which is Chachi and I's favorite thing we've seen over the last year. Uh, my favorite part of Lewis was his uh, special anniversary show attire. That he came out in his Boy Scouts uniform. Uh, <laughs> they like, and they told a great little story between them, um, mm-hmm. and I was so happy. And then um, he's going to yell at me if I don't talk about him. Is uh, Derek Direction, who uh, started the show off for us hot with returning Drake Braddock, and uh, I mean, I love, um, I love Derek. He's so good and he's so smart and he's so much fun to to watch. And, and, he's and, and so I talented. I don't know if it was you or somebody else uh, putting mm-hmm. him over, but definitely like light years beyond last time I saw him. Yes. It was good to see him again. Yeah, and then we had a great tag match. Um, uh, so much fun between the three teams. System Elite is a goof. They're fun. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the whole flannel stuff just makes me laugh. Philly Marina was the first time we brought those kids in, uh, trained up in Mega. Philly Marino experience is so much fun. Mm -hmm. They're energetic. They're dancing. And then um, Robert Park Williams and Calvin Couture, Golden Sheik. Both friends of the show. All By the way, the longest dance uh, (laughs) segment that I think I've ever witnessed in person. It was a three-way dance. It was a three-way dance. (laughs) Literally. It was. There was a lot happening. Yeah, and I don't know if the the music uh, situation was was a little sketchy there. Yeah, for yeah a, second. a little sketchy. So we were running around trying to play all this stuff. I, I like again, top to bottom. Oh, and you know what? I forgot. Uh, David Lawless and Tony Johnson was the other for a number of contenders. Man, like Lawless continues to get better what, and better. How did Lawless drop in that? That that was just 
the, did the Rise Before Christmas poem. Oh, yes. Yeah. That, please put that on YouTube. Yeah, we'll put that Because it's up. amazing. Yeah. And um, Tony Johnson continues to be this guy that just like, man, bell to bell. That guy, that guy is just impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, we were so happy. And then we got, we got, uh, like I said, uh, January 13th is the next show. Um, right now we're taking like this, like couple days to just kind of like detox after like all of that stuff. And, um, I like texted Brandon and I was like, okay, let's just take a day. And he's like, I'm so sore. Like I'm so <laughs> sore, uh, from that match with Duke. And then immediately like 15 minutes later, he was like, all right, well, I'm already editing videos and I'm already doing this, but like, we didn't take a break at all. Like <laughs> we're supposed to like, you know, you know, take it all in, just enjoy what you guys did. It was a year celebration. And like immediately we were like, Oh, we got to get these videos out. And we got to post this stuff. And I've been, I've been saying to people leading up to this, you guys are a year in and I've never seen a promotion with this much energy and doing so many things right. The first year yeah. of, of, of a promotion. It, it comes from Brandon. A hundred percent. He's the owner of the company. Um, and for those people that, that don't know Brandon K, um, because he's he's a local guy. I mean, he's from uh, Pittsburgh. But this was a guy who had looks at WWE and TNA um, in his prime years. Uh, WWE, at one point, from what I understand, I'd have to double check with him because I, it's been a while since I heard the story. It was basically had a contract on the table at one point. TNA, I think, put a contract on the table to this guy at one point. And Brandon has been a guy who did everything the right way. Has been This is a guy in his free time. When he has free time, because he has a, a job and runs his own promotion and wrestles, um, goes down to places like Peru or Haiti or the Dominican Republic and um, does charity work for them, uh, builds houses for people. He is such an upstanding, wonderful guy. Um, he is everything that like you would want like out of a, like a, an owner. Um, he's honest. He's always there for people answers his phone, never shies away. And I think that has just bled down top down to every person on that roster. Um, there are so many guys that want to wrestle him, that want to work with him. And you can't find anyone that says a bad word about Brandon. He is so, uh, such a wonderful guy. So it starts to top with him and we continue to just like, man, it's, it's after your first year, like it's such like a, uh, okay, just like, keep going, just keep going, just keep going. And mm-hmm. then we finally got through this first year and now it's like, okay, now let's open it up. Like, what can we do? So we're real excited about year two of so what we can do. Go check it out. I know it, it, it's south of Pittsburgh if you guys want to check it out, but um, uh, in person, but you guys are putting a bit of media out there now. Yeah, so starting to. <laughs> starting to a little bit. And I say even... We started annoying people with our Facebook feed for, oh, there for a couple of days. There you go. There you go. Uh, that's how you need to do it, so... Yeah. Uh, and, and even I've been in, enjoying even some of the promos going on there. So go check it out. Yes. Rise Wrestling. Um, Rise Wrestling on that's R Y S E. Yeah. Uh, on the Facebook, it's some good good stuff there. Yeah. With the uh, web- website, I believe it's risewrestling dot com, mm-hmm. which um, it does get updated. We're doing well. We're we're, we're that's trying. better than some promotions. <laughs> yes. Uh, so go check it out. Yeah. And, and we have, of course, a Bobby F J Town still with us. Yep. Hit the wave to the audio listeners. And Hi, also joining us from Poughkeepsie, Jay, New York. He's excited yeah, about that 205 Live show coming up. It's Mad Mike. Sorg. Sorg. Are you excited? Um, Sorg. Um, you yeah, it, it, it was brought to my... I was going... I'm going to the 205 Live show. Yes. Done. I was going to start a PowerPoint chant. Like, that, that was my... That no was chanting. My, I, I, I know. Hold, I'm... <laughs> Bobby, I'm getting there. That was my that was my singular goal. Let it breathe. To, to start a PowerPoint chant. Then, uh, because I was at work, I was in work mode. I was throwing toys at people. I was, I was giving balloons to children and giving children to parents to get them the fuck out of my store. Throwing was, children at parents. Yes, throwing children <laughs> at parents. It's a thing. It no, works. No matter if it belonged to them or not. Yeah, no, I don't care at this point. No. Um, Mike's the Oprah of children giving. <laughs> You get a child. You get a child. Apparently, Matt Carlin's and Jen Carlin's get two more children. Yeah, everyone, everyone gets a child. Um, but and I wasn't thinking. And Bobby, you're absolutely right. There is no chanting. Mm-hmm. However, at least to my knowledge, there is no slide against 
a communal organized request for a PowerPoint. A communal organized request. In other words, if I get everyone asking for a PowerPoint at the same time, that is a request that is not a chant. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do PowerPoint? I want to point out, yes. a PowerPoint what? presentation is now over on yes. 205 Live. If that is not an mm -hmm. accomplishment, yeah, right? Gulak's yes. amazing. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. And and Alex, oh, okay, Alex, we'll talk about that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But right now, yeah. it is yeah. time for the big question. And Bobby F. J-Town actually has our big question this week. I do? You, oh, did, I do. You, you, you do. Hand. Yes, you do. It's right in my hand. It's right in my hand. Okay, <clears throat> this week's big question is what movie will Sting base his next gimmick off? No, of? no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, that was oh, that'd be dead in um, daycare. <laughs> okay. Here's the real big question this week. What superstar do you think had the best potential and would have been a bigger star in WWE had Vince McMahon got, not gotten in their way? Ooh. Mm, I think. Hmm. Oh, I I don't want to take Marcus's because you Discuss. kind of gave me the idea for this earlier. <laughs> no, no, I don't have one right. Oh, oh, did I? Sami Zayn. S yeah, <laughs> Sami's up there. That, well, it, it still might be too early to tell on Sami Zayn though. Yeah. Mm, because yeah. hipster hipster douchebag works for him. Yeah, it yeah. does. Hipster douchebag works. It, like if he can be the Earth Two Daniel Bryan, <laughs> see here's the other, here's the thing is when Sami Zayn was coming out of NXT, I legitimately thought he was like point blank the next Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. He yeah. was that good of a baby face. That dude in all like his matches with uh, Steen down in NXT and then um, his matches with Neville down there, his matches with um, uh, what's his face? Yeah, one of John Cena. But um, oh my god, if you think about it. Sami Zayn is still following the Daniel Bryan path. He is. He is. I just thought, like, man, this guy. He, he's still, because Daniel Bryan didn't get over until he turned heel. He still hasn't met his AJ Lee yet. Maybe Kevin Owens is his AJ Lee. <laughs> uh, Bob, Bobby, Bobby, you're getting a little digital so you're we can fix that real quick. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think Kevin Owens is his cane. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, there's still a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. um, one, guy, yeah. one guy that comes to the top of my brain is I think would have been I don't know if he would have been like a main event guy or like a oh my god this guy's like a superstar but like Paul Burchill for a second wow here. Paul Burchill watched Pirates of the Caribbean to get his gimmick Paul Burchill's <laughs> that pirate gimmick was over was, it was really over it. and everyone liked it and Vince McMahon was like I don't get it so we're done I don't yeah, I don't know if Paul Burchill would have been like heavyweight champion, but he had a run in him and yep. that just got shut down and then he was just he, done. He could with have the had like a Val Venus type run, right? Yes. Like a, like a gimmicky run. Yes. Like a honky, like a honky tonk man thing. Absolutely. He's a comedy wrestler too. Paul Birch was a good worker and, a, and a, he had a smart gimmick. He came in on that rope swing. It was fun. Mm -hmm. and, and he had a female valet who could wrestle, Katie Lee Birchall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, it was actually like a really, really smart thing that they put together and then Old man Vince just goes like, I don't get it, and it's just done. And then he was like released not long after that. Yeah, yeah. He's and, one and that isn't like, this after they did a weird incest angle. Yeah, yeah. for a little yeah. bit too. Yeah, that's a Vince so, idea. That's a, <laughs> that was Vince. Yeah, that's that a Vince was definitely idea. Vince. Um, mm -hmm. I, Paul Burchill's on my list right now. I don't know why. I think I, maybe because we were talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean thing. We were, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. Also, you know who? I, here's another one. Um, uh, rest in peace. But uh, Sean O'Hare. Hmm. Sean yeah. O'Hare had a good little gimmick going. He was a good mm. worker. That whole Devil's Advocate thing that he was starting. Yeah. It was like unique and it was different. And then like one day he just likes spiders. <laughs> like that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? Yeah, the, you remember did. those promos? It was like a beta version of what Corey Graves wanted. <laughs> yeah. <be>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like you, I don't know if you remember those promos, like a, leading up to Sean O'Hare, he was doing like all these cool promos. He was doing all this cool stuff, and then like he came out and he was wearing this like weird jacket, and you're like, all right, that's fine. And then like all of a sudden he's uh, hanging out with Roddy Piper, 
And then yeah. he's just like, then he just likes spiders. That was his whole gimmick. And then he <laughs> left to do like MMA. <laughs> but I think that was another one that if he would have left, if they would have left him to develop and really work it out and Vince not pulling the plug on him, I think he could have been a little bit more successful. So I, th- I have mine. Mine is, mine is pretty, it's near and dear to my heart. Derek Bateman. Uh, Derek there are, Bateman. There, yeah, there are rumors. I, Bobby, there's always rumors, but mm. but Derek Bateman is the one that got away that don't know they got away. <laughs> like, um, just the Mister USA guy. Like, they like there were literally three people who turned around that entire season of NXT. One of them's in Lucha. One of them's in TNA, and one of them is currently making fun of Netflix shows on SmackDown. Hmm. Like, like and, that... and remember, Fandango started by pouring milk over his head. Yeah. So I mean, and there's a Daniel Bryan connection there too. Like, I would love it if Daniel Bryan was the one to bring back Derek Bateman. Mm-hmm. Like, if we could bring back Derek Bateman to have him eliminate the Miz from the Royal Rumble. And we have the former Daniel Bryan protégés going at it. Derek Bateman the third. Yes. Oh! <laughs> Bobby, yes. Yes, Bobby just tied it in exactly where it has to be. Derek Bateman the third. Yes. DB3. DB3. <laughs> Bobby, you're a fucking genius. Yes, absolutely. That, that's, what, that's what needs to happen. That might even be my prediction for 2018 when we do predictions next week. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, Bobby, did you get one? I, I, I have one. Um, near and dear to my father's heart. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's Wade one. Barrett is my choice because oh. he was the leader of the Nexus. He, he fought John Cena. I mean, he had a, a really good feud with John Cena, I thought. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they were building him and building him, and then just something happened, and then the core happened. And then the rails fell off, and then he got his momentum back with the. the yeah. I'm afraid I got some bad news, and then he was gone. Yeah, like a lot the king of, of the ring. A lot of, a lot of injuries though to Wade Barrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the were injuries didn't help. That that didn't help, but I mean, they really didn't do like the full potential with him that they could have. Yeah. I just, <sighs> I think that injury train kind of does that, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I was thinking back on the Sammy You're thing. Weak. Like Sammy got hurt. I believe waving his arms before the John Cena match. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sammy got hurt because he was so excited he was on Raw. Right. <laughs> I, I oh, mean, yeah, I, Dad. Or even Thanks. or even Enzo yeah. when he hurt himself in his first pay per view match by running the ropes too hard. Um, well, that was. That's I feel Enzo's like a I feel like when something like that happens, like that that may like oh, he's an injury prone guy. Maybe we can't put him in a spot, right? Dolph Ziggler had the title, got a concussion, right? And I, I think that does something. Another one mentioned in, um, mentioned in the chat room. Hey, what? You're skipping me. I, Missy, <laughs> what would you like to see? What, what would you have as an answer? Gail Kim. Gail Kim. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. She that's a, that's a solid call. Yeah. So much more mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. WWE. Yep. And Just wrong era. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Granted, my answer. Uh, I, I'm I'm not saying I want to see Gail Kim back in WWE. No, 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 no. I'm not saying I want to see her back. Okay, now, okay. But I, 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 but they, she I, could have. I want to make sure we're all on that wavelength because, as someone who watched TNA, I've seen a fucking enough of Gail Kim at this point. But I could see. <laughs> but I could generally see her yeah. doing that Mickey James role now. Oh right? yeah, she yeah, get, yeah, absolutely. Like a Gail Kim versus Charlotte has has some Ooh. money on it. Ooh, yeah. it's got some money on it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially, like, if, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind if Gail Kim shows up if they do a women's Royal Rumble. Yeah, like as a, yeah. a one off. Then she'll just run to the bottom row. <laughs> <laughs> and just walk out. Um uh from the chat room. Uh and again on that kind of injury line I was thinking about. Finn Sorg, did you say yours? Yeah, I did. That was the first one. Sammy. Okay, I, Sammy I, I stole oh, from Marcus. Okay. okay. Um, Finn Balor was the only one I didn't this, get on this list. Okay. Uh Missy has an entire list from the chat room for me. Thanks. I was, I was going to go down. Uh, we got, uh, well, I would have mentioned Finn Balor, uh, uh, first Universal Champion, hasn't really done much. Again, got injured in that, in that mm-hmm. high profile yeah, but I, match. I think, I, think Finn, I think it's too soon to call him. I Finn. agree on that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, we'll also, co- let's come back to Finn in a second because I do want to okay. talk about that. Uh, also yeah, from, because, because like because like you got Brock holding up the world title scene on Raw. Until right, that right. changes, right. they can't do anything with Finn. Right. Uh, also from the chat, uh, Tina, uh, Ricky Steamboat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could have done more with that. She also says Tolia Blanchard. To- Wait. He was uh, yeah. he was in the tag team. It, with it, was, in, it was in the Brain Busters. The Brain Busters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They could have done a lot with him. Bonner says Bailey, and I think Marcus, you had some some words about that in the chat. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, God, if I remember how long ago, like when Bailey was in NXT, I was still like blogging because that's what you did back then. Yeah, the hip kids. But um, so friend of mine, so uh, Trevor Oz, ran a um, website, and I wrote a whole thing on Bailey about like at the time I felt that Bailey was going to be the the female John Cena. That she yep. was going to be the most marketable woman they've ever had in their lives mm-hmm. because she is primed, primed to double their audience with uh, with women who and little girls who want to watch wrestling. Yep. And the marketability, the merchandising, Bailey to me was a girl that could go on uh, USA Today or not USA, or uh, Good Morning America, the Today Show, Sesame Street, Sesame Street. You know the stuff yeah. that Cena yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stuff yeah. that like Brock Lesnar can't do. Nick Kid, Nick Kids, uh, the, 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 the Awards Choice show. Awards, yeah. the Kids yeah. Choice Awards, yeah, and yeah. then go on MTV Movie Awards and mm. do those types of things. She was a perp, and they have gotten in her way. At, Every step of the imagination. Mm-hmm. Well, She's not a hard character to do. Right. And, and I think um, I, I, we, I've heard this phrase about her. And then I've heard a phrase about the one that won uh, Tough Enough uh, from Triple H mm-hmm. saying, I don't understand it, but my kids love you. So we're going with yes. you. Yes. So if Paul, Triple H doesn't understand it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Does Vince? No. 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 She doesn't get it. She's like, well, I, I, I don't I'm, get it. She's a kid. I, you yeah. know. And, 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 and I think that Vince McMahon is the guy who thought up hot lesbian action. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. Does he understand? But, like, Vince understands money. Yeah. And merchandising. Yeah. yeah. But but, they have, but it has to be presented to him in the right way for yeah, Vince to take it on is the thing. Yeah. I don't think that it's still it Vince's world. It's packaged appropriately. It, it needs to be presented to him and how it can make him money. And, like, one of my big arguments was, like, uh, one of the reasons the NFL went from a niche sport to America's pastime was – they started appealing to women. They started marketing towards women. They started looking like to make the sport about women. Because the old joke used to be the guys watch the Super Bowl, the women watch the commercials. Ha, 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 ha. But then the sport started marketing towards women. And all of a sudden you realize when you market towards women, you double your audience. Which is Total Divas. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and the new line of WWE women's action figures. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. you and but as soon and as you Balor. as soon as you start, and that's I mean that's <laughs> yes. part of it. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you start taking it seriously to market towards women in that type of way, and not just like we sell pink jerseys, like you start marketing the right way, mm-hmm. you start realizing that women have money that they want to spend on this product and mm-hmm. let them spend the money, mm-hmm. get out of their way, mm-hmm. let them do it. And I thought Bailey was like, Bailey is like. What John Cena was to little boys who's like you, ever, you go to a WWE show and there's like that six year old kid that's just covered head to toe in John Cena stuff. Yeah. That was little girls with Bailey. Well, you saw yeah. that at full sale with look the, at Izzy. You know, the the fans. As, the as a man, as a man who literally shed tears <laughs> in take, uh, take over Brooklyn yeah. when Bailey won that women's title, mm-hmm. like how they fucked up Bailey so much, it's absolutely ridiculous to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. she is absolutely ridiculous to me. She's how a money much train. they have fucked Bailey's. She like is a career. money train. I'm glad you continue there. <laughs> she's wholesome. Yeah. Um, she's smart, and like she gives a good message to kids. And the mm-hmm. one and the one thing like people criticize WWE when it went PG, but if you notice when WWE went to PG, it was right around the time that um, the the country went through a recession. Because there's one thing you'll know that is recession proof. Parents will go without to give something to their kids. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. m- marketing towards kids in that era was smart because it's recession proof. And Bailey, to yeah, me, yeah. is recession proof. And I don't I don't get why they have I thought I thought she was gonna be a, a way bigger star than she is. And maybe she might get there. You know, it takes people some time. They don't just come out and become massive stars, you know, quite frequently. But yeah, that's that's one that is should have been bigger. 
if she gets sent to a different branch, she can completely change her character mm-hmm. and go back to how it should have been NXT. Well, and the, and she might also be the one of the casualties of the NXT to WWE switch mm-hmm. because like she well, be. there's not they haven't made like a lot of like star stars out of the NXT classes outside of the Shield. Like it's it's been tough going to get those guys to the main events. And and those guys weren't even really on NXT proper. No. Mm-hmm. Like they were more FCW on NXT, guys. They're on NXT FCW. before the network. Yeah. Yeah, they're on NXT before the network. They weren't yeah. guys, especially there was so so many people have their brand built on NXT and then mm-hmm. come up. And then like they, like they, I think the closest thing that they've had to like an NXT proper guy getting a push is maybe Fandango. Uh, I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to. Bray, uh, well, Bray Wyatt yeah, was almost stretch. a. No, was Bray no. was. No, he was a uh, Hulu, NXT. B- Bray Wyatt, the whole Wyatt family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they weren't. Uh, like I said, a star. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I want. I want to get, I wanna get to some more of these here. So we can move on a little bit. Uh, La- Chris Larusso says Dusty Rhodes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. well, that was. Yeah. That was a rib. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Uh, um, that that was a rib, brother. Brother. I recommend. Uh, Bruce Pritchard's way. Bruce Pritchard's podcast talking about Dusty coming in mm-hmm. and like him being asked and, and and talking about the character and everything too. So uh, it's one of those I like listening. I haven't listened. I've listened to like the first three episodes of it because holy shit, they're like three hours long. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of I, I like those. I like recently Jimmy Jacobs on Chris uh, Jericho's podcast and even the Dolph Ziggler on Edge and Christian because they give you a little bit of that like. When we keep saying, we've said over and over on this episode, well, we didn't get by Vince. Yeah. You know, and I think those give you a good idea of how things work backstage, Mm -hmm. but from the source. Um, And even most recently, we mentioned on the 365 with uh, Kevin Owens, when he comes back, ask Vince if we're good, and he says no. I think that tells everybody in a very strong way, that's where the gatekeeper is. If something doesn't work and disappears the next week... That's probably why. Um, and also very interesting That'd things. Be- and also very interesting things about things that happen because Vince isn't there uh, from the Jimmy Jacobs interview. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, Alex in Bakersfield, uh, Matt Seidel. By the way, I, yeah, I, I, I saw. Yeah, I saw. Uh, he kind of got in his own way. Did, yeah, yeah. With some of the true. the uh, didn't he have some issues with? Um, we'll call it the wellness yeah. policy. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. He got like, he got in his own way a little bit. Listen to the Cole Cabana interview where he's talking about yeah. like taking pe- peyote or something, and yeah, yeah. and, and, and I would I would put him in the same category with like Paul London. They got in their own way. I got one. Yeah, I got another one. Okay, Bob, Mr. Kennedy. Um, injuries got in his way. Injuries too. Injuries got Randy Orton the two. Yeah. No, but he got in his own way too. He got popped for steroids, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did get no, popped he for did. a wellness violation. He, he had some he injuries. Did. He yeah. got right after winning Money in the Bank. He got yeah. popped for steroids. That's and then was, I was, was he really hurt hard. right when they were going to do the Vince McMahon son kit or his yeah. you know, son? Or was he either hurt or he got popped for Randy wellness? Orton? Yeah. Something happened there where they pulled the plug on him on that. Uh, Tina says Austin Aries. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, he kind of walked out of the company because of that. Yeah, I mean, I think they were doing fine with Aries, but then Aries just decided he didn't like where he was. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's we true. Um, we mentioned Bray Wyatt, but Paul yeah. Paul brought that one up. We will, I think we touched yeah. talked at length about Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. So from Brand, the only other one I, I want to throw out is, and this is like a mid '90s name, uh, which he had a full career and he's had a great career. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but Goldust is one. Yeah. Because when Goldust was at his hottest, he was main eventing against Shawn Michaels. He was doing a lot of stuff. And then they got so much backlash because of the character that they pulled the plug on him real hard. Mm-hmm. And He's it, before his time. Yeah. And it wasn't his, his fault that Vince was like, yeah. I can't deal with the phone calls and the parents groups and this type of stuff. So we're going to pull it. But Goldust was a guy that was like, he was set to be heavyweight champion and was main eventing big shows and mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. unfortunately just no one else was ready for that character at that time mm-hmm. um I want- it, it doesn't help that the way they portrayed it on tv was that no one on tv was ready for that character yeah like mm-hmm. you had roddy piper basically calling him not a man i mean yeah. if they had actually been a little proactive about that mm-hmm it could have worked better and tried to use it as a message instead of trying to, cause like you can have it be a message and still have him be a heel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you like 
basically attack the core of that character, yeah, it's never going to get as far over as you want it to. All right, guys. I'm going to roll this along because I just looked at the clock. <laughs> so, our guest. Yeah. Marcus. What's up? What did you learn in wrestling this week? Oh. Oh. I didn't really watch wrestling this week. Well, it, it can wait, 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 wait. What, <laughs> did what did you learn from wrestling this week? From wrestling this week. <laughs> you have a different perspective. Right, you did minutes. have a show this week. Take a few minutes I did. To think you about watched. That. We'll come back. You watched people wrestling. I did. You watched the match that you were refereeing. <laughs> yeah, I did watch that match. Um, man, you uh, you know what I learned, and I'm gonna I'll put him over because he has been such a huge help to me. Um, and has been uh, really, like, I don't want to call it a mentor, but a really big help. Um, over the last week, as we started advertising for this anniversary show, and I'm sitting there looking at my card, trying to figure out placement of matches, figuring out all this type of stuff, and I'm stressed as hell, and every day I'm thinking, <laughs> how do I get people in this building? How do I get people to come to our show? Um, Brutal Bob Evans reached out to me, um, and was texting me and is like, this is what you need to do. Like he and I were texting back and forth. And what I learned is um, positivity and helping people and doing things the right way really, really do pay off. Bob Evans has a simple message, which is serve first. And by this is a guy who met me once, has never wrestled for our promotion, was sharing our stuff and was texting me, hey man, have you tried this advertising yet? Have you tried this avenue? Have you done this? That is the beautiful part of professional wrestling. And I learned that if you do that, you don't have to undercut it. You don't have to be backstabbing. If you serve first and you do it right, you can fill a building. And that was the coolest thing. So I'll definitely put Brutal Bob over as like one of the nicest, most awesome people I've ever met in this business. That, again, a kid he did not know. He met me once sparingly i doubt he remembers me and was texting me about the show so that's awesome like that's what i learned that it, cool. it can be a positive experience if you do it the right way absolutely yeah thanks uncle bob <laughs> what about you bobby fj town i learned a bunch of things from nxt this week that's um, right you're right at the learned, live show here in pittsburgh i learned that um even if Aleister Black is facing somebody you don't know, the match will last longer than it should have. Um, who, who was that guy? I still don't know who that guy was. I love um, I loved when referee Jessica Carr, formerly Kennedy Brink, Brink yeah. friend of the show, uh, was dancing to his music. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. and trying to pop Aleister Black in the ring. By the way, Aleister Black uh, is the Kennedy Brink. Aleister Black is the answer to your question in uh, about three years about who, Vince McMahon getting in someone's way. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh, don't stop that. He's, Vince won't be around in four be, years. Vince is never going to die. He is eternal. He is eternal. <laughs> if anybody sold his soul. He's going to be NXT's Finn Balor like, going forward, I think. Mm, could be. Um, also, I learned that you shouldn't humble brag in front of a homeless <laughs> person outside of NXT. <laughs> what? what did you say? As you're, uh, you're walking a, out of the venue and there's a homeless yeah. person begging for change, I and you said... Past, I was running past. I feel bad. I was running past, and I yelled, hey, $5 in a, for, and, or $15 for a poster and a cup isn't too bad, is it, guys? <laughs> <laughs> As I ran past him. <laughs> Bobby, I approve of that message. I approve of that uh, message. Oh, it was Bobby. not my proudest moment. At least you didn't... Was it Dennis Gregory? No. He's a bum. Get it? No. Old, joke. Old joke. Old mayhem joke. To call, to call back. Joke. Call oh, back. Call, call back to, to ep 2004. Episode 30 <laughs> of <laughs> our 599 running podcast. And I learned yes. I didn't get sick this time. Yay! Uh, Mad Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Okay. I learned... That the only enemy to the potential great war in WWE sits at the desk of commentary on Monday nights. He hails from he hails from Houston. Oh, yeah. He is a former five time five time 
I don't five know you're gonna Five time, five time WCW champion. And I swear to God, Booker T, if you fuck this up, you should be deleted. I told you he was coming back, by the way, and you didn't believe me. I know. No, I. No, Bobby, you didn't Bobby, believe me. Bobby, I still don't. I need to see something happen in the ring. My I need to see a drone. I need to see a child riding a Power Wheels. I need to see fucking everything. My One promo. Okay. Does not. Okay, but my, not Mike, like Mike. Okay, but okay, but still. The announcers can fuck this up so bad. How? But still, seeing the promo, the back and forth kind of half the promo. promo fine. You, the promo you liked was it. Fine, you liked it. But. but did you hear the announcers afterwards? Yeah, no. They don't. can entirely fuck this whole thing up. Oh, yeah. They, because yeah. say what you will about TNA. Say what you will about TNA because Lord knows I've said a lot, and I'll <laughs> say more. They never gave away that gimmick. Mm -mm. They always steered into the skid with that. So say what you will about TNA. They let Matt be Matt. If we let Matt and Bray be creative and don't undercut it by a laughing or, oh, Cole, I don't know what's going on with this. Like, just let them do their thing. Did you just do Macho Man let, announcing? No, that was, <laughs> no that's yeah. a bad Booker T impression. That's a bad. Okay, all right. Uh, if you would have said just, sucka at the end, I would have bought it. That's that's fair. Tell me you didn't just say that. Okay, that's better. Uh, yeah, brother. Wow. Yeah. Brother. No, no, that's he used a different word. Um <laughs> no. no, but um okay. that's that's the only thing that can fuck this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michael because Cole they, already kinda like if they just if they just let Matt be Matt and Bray be Bray, which means he's gonna lose, then it'll be fine. But they are, the they, announcers can They fuck had it up some completely. shifty eyes at the end of that segment. They didn't show them, but you I, know what I mean? Like the vocal, like, it, yeah. you know, like, mm, what's going on like, there? Huh. Like, like, I think Corey will be fine with it, but the second one of them laughs, yeah. it's over. Yeah, yeah. yeah the second is. one of them laughs, it's over. It's completely over. Like, Spoiler alert, Vince doesn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Vince is oh. Michael Cole's ear. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Vince doesn't get it. Hey, it this would yeah. be a great time for them to hire Dave, Dave Lagana back just to do these segments. Yeah. Vince, you know? Vince isn't yeah. going to get it. No. No. Um, but, but man, Matt if you... By the way, I don't get it, so what am I... I mean, <laughs> I'm the asshole. But, but <laughs> wait, wait, you're not a fan, a fan of the, the final deletion? I, I never got it. No? I never got it. Like, I sat there and went, like, I don't get it. Like, I... Mm. I, I like... It I'll is, admit that I'm, it is I not might, for everybody. I admit that I might be wrong. Yeah, like I might like go like, oh, okay, I'm the I'm the asshole. I'm the one who doesn't get it. Like that's fine because I've been that no, guy before. I, honestly, I didn't get it when it first happened. Mm -hmm. Like when it first happened, literally everyone else on this show was raving about it. I'm like, guys, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And then like the stuff with the piano started, and. And keyboard Matt, and we see Vanguard One. Once you bring a drone that can produce holograms, I'm gonna be in. I don't care what else you got going on. <laughs> Once you have a drone that produces holograms, I'm in. It, it leaned into so, this this very specific, weird kind of humor. Yeah, and I usually like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like mean, I really do. I just it it's like that YouTube channel that you don't understand why it has a million followers. It just and like look, I have been all of us have been wrong about wrestling sometimes where you go like that guy's never going to do it or that's not going to sell. And then it does. And so like, I still watch this stuff and go like, I still don't get it, but enough people do that. It's worth doing. But like how, how much of the Matt Hardy stuff have you seen? I definitely saw the first run of it before. Mostly the stuff is like before him and Jeff started tagging again. Oh, okay. See that, you have to get where Matt and Jeff are on the same page again. Yeah. Because the broken Matt brother Nero stuff was okay, but once they were teaming and you get to a point where Matt is legit throwing fireballs at Abyss on a moving truck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, that happened. I mean, <laughs> oh, if that shit. hasn't sold you on it, yeah, I like, and I'm not sure how much I can help. There is like a like a like like an undercurrent of like the B-movie aspect of it or things. That, like, and I get it. Like... I, I mean, like, look, I understand why people like it. 
Mm-hmm. I, I'm just going to be... Like, I have this conversation all the time about Steen, too, because I still don't get Kevin Owens. It like, Sting's next gimmick. Yeah. Stings. <laughs> I don't, like... There's, Bro- there's, broken Sting? Like, yeah, Broken Sting. It just comes... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hot cheese. Um, Brother Sting, I knew you'd come. <laughs> <laughs> he, sh- he will. He'll do it, man. Um, that guy's got that guy's got a mortgage. Um, no, like I like I've been wrong about stuff. People like flat out, but like this is one that like I don't know if it's gonna play on the big stage. Um, if if everyone will like, but I could be I could be a hundred percent wrong. Mm. But I'm probably not gonna. I'll, I'll fast it help, forward. It helps that the crowd's already into it. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. I mean that crowd. Yeah. That, that, that the. The crowds are already into it, which that's going to help it tremendously. Well, I mean, it does have like give Matt credit on the on the effect of he pick he's smart enough that with the character he picks chantable items with uh, certain mm-hmm. phrases, the way he frames it, like he knows how to market a character because of how many years he spent marketing characters. I mean, flat mm-hmm. out. So like he's smart enough to know like it, like. He workshopped it in a small little environment and then has now blown it up into uh, what could be a massive success mm-hmm. and another complete if, run for him. If we see the Lake of Reincarnation in WWE and Husky Harrison. Oh, well, no. Oh, oh no. No, just, it, oh, uh, yeah. no I, I thought Sammy Callahan amazing. was breaking back in again. Because that will honestly fix Bray Wyatt. He needs something. And I'm not even if he, joking If he at rolls all. back Husky Harris? If if he roll Yes, because Bray Wyatt, I don't think at this point, is salvageable. Mm. He's work. Cold mm. place. I don't, I hey, don't think Hey, he Missy, what'd you but, learn but from you, wrestling this week? Do you know what I learned in yeah. wrestling what'd this week? What'd you learn in wrestling this week? Some creative talent occasionally gets it right and doesn't give the crowd what they think is going to happen. Okay. Example? There was a show that I went to this weekend. What? <laughs> that I expected the match to go a certain way because it was a guest referee. Oh, continuing to <laughs> put <laughs> over our guest segment this week. No, like legit. How often do you hear me talk about shows where I'm like, I appreciate that because I didn't see it coming. Yeah. With as many wrestling shows as I go to that mm-hmm. I'm you know, part of the production team on mm-hmm. and I didn't see this coming. Mm-hmm. I, I will tell you a little inside baseball on this one. So let's, we'll break the wall here. Uh, what? Break the wall down. You're yeah. Jericho it? Jericho. So, so we're talking about Duke Davis and Brandon Kay, which was amazing. These guys are, like, awesome. Duke mm-hmm. was texting me, and he was like, I think we need a special guest referee for the match. And I was like, why? Like, that doesn't make any sense. He's like, you need to do it. Like, you need to referee this match. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why would I? And he's like, I kind of just want you to referee. <laughs> and I was like, all right. I mean, that, like, cool. Like, yeah. it'll be part of it. And then so we start laying out the story of, like, how do we make this make sense? So we got to the story of how it made sense. And we did this whole angle with Brandon being the owner. And I came with this idea of, like, if I'm a special guest referee, like, I'm worried that he's going to end the company because he'll kill the owner, basically. So then we do this whole segment. We do the promo segment. We set all this up. We get to the back, and we're sitting around going over the show afterwards. And Brandon immediately turns to me and goes, everyone thinks you're going to screw me. Yep. Everyone thinks you're going to screw me now. Mm-hmm. Because you just gave this impassioned speech about how you believe in me, and I asked you to believe in me again one last time, and then they think you're going to screw me, and you're going to take over the company or something. And you, I was you like... You have no idea how many times I heard that. Yes. He goes, so, we need to tease it, and we need to get there. And then he was, I was like, okay. And he goes... How do we end it? And I go, I help you to the back. And he goes, you're going to be mega baby phase after that. And I was like, that's where we're going. Because that's the exact opposite of everyone. And I, that man, that match was hot. They were screaming for everything. It was insanity. The point, the point where, because you're teasing like the, because there's there's a towel gimmick in this. So like that was say, Duke's idea. He was yeah. like, th- we'll do a towel thing. And I was like, okay, so cool. It was, you know, it was pin submission or or I throw this towel and the match is over, right? Yeah. And you're teasing it and and a good guy, Brandon's getting, his, you know, you know choke slammed over and over again. And and his 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 wife is yelling at you to throw it, like yeah. right beside us. And then. And she then, was legit crying. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was it was crazy, and it was uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, yes. and, and and then and then the table spot, I believe it was that I showed mm-hmm. you guys earlier in the show. That happens. Yeah. And a family jumps up and yells at you. <laughs> throw the towel. Throw the blanket towel. Yeah. Which like backstage when we did the whole angle, it was all about like. If I throw the towel, like, because of Brandon, I want for safety. That's why we put this in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At no point did I think, like, people would think that I could throw the towel to stop the match so Brandon would win. Like, that never <laughs> crossed my brain. <laughs> and then they're screaming, like, he's done throwing the towel. Well, because the idea is, like, the wife would have the towel or something, right? Like, yeah, typically. Yeah. Like, like somebody well, who has a stake yeah, and a one side. Brett Hart did the, yeah. the famous towel well, thing. Martha Hart. Yeah. Martha Hart. Well, yeah. we thought about doing that, and then we were like, oh, no, she would throw the towel. Like, there's no yeah, risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would have thrown it way earlier in the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, again, led to the whole, is he going to screw him over? Because yeah. he's not throwing in this towel yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because going into the night, I was just like, you know what? I could see them completely doing this, and they're going to go against what everything says. Yeah. And it was based on our Indie Mayhem show yeah. discussion. Yeah. And so I'm like, they, they, they're, they're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And I was f- flip-flopping throughout the match. Did you think that – did you at any moment think the match was going to end in a pinfall? Yes. Okay. I, I didn't think anyone was going to think. I thought they were all going to be like, it's going to be a stoppage some no, way no, or no. the other. No, no, no. I figured that it wasn't going to be a stoppage. I was betting on the stoppage. No, see. No. See, I wasn't. I, I went hook, line, and sinker for fucking everything. <laughs> and then the match ended. Like, no, no. The match ended. Mm-hmm. Everything happened that happened. Yeah. I realized, like, I don't know how many times, like, she whispered something. and was like, oh, yeah, they're completely going to do this. And you didn't. Mm-hmm. And then, I'm like, the match ends. And you we- guys go to the back. And then I'm just sitting there. I was like. This is exactly what he talked about in our interview. <laughs> yeah, exactly what we talked that. about. Because because you we t- even did the the uh, Brett Sean and Taker spot from SummerSlam <laughs> where I had this I had the stick and mm-hmm. I swing in a Duke and I'm gonna hit Brandon. Then he ducks out of the way too and I don't hit anyone. Like we we played this like every little thing of like what do they what do they think we're gonna do? Okay, how do we get yeah. X? Like mm-hmm. how do we get around it? How do we move it around? And like. It's that type of match keeps like casual fans entertained, mm-hmm. but if you can hook smarks too, where they go like, which is exactly what we kind of went in depth with on, uh, when we were talking on your interview. Exactly, if you can hook a smark th- because they know the tropes, they know mm-hmm. where yeah. you're going, and then if you turn it just sideways for a second and you get them to doubt that first one, mm-hmm. the whole match then spin it on its head, mm-hmm. and they don't know where you're going. And Brandon mm-hmm. and Duke were perfect with it. They, oh, they it were was, amazing. It was, it was amazing. By the way, they went 23 minutes, and we looked up. And we were like, I thought, what? There was no way that was twenty three. Right, and it didn't yeah. feel like it no, on it, our it end either. No, it didn't feel like a, no, absolutely yeah. not. There were two so. matches that went over twenty minutes, and and neither one of them felt like, oh god, yeah. how when's this match ending? Yeah. I gotta, I gotta Which, put that match out for people to see because Duke and Brandon mm-hmm. is just a banger, dude. Those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. Right. And like I said, I'm not the wrestling mark that Sorg is. Like, I'm just usually like, I'm getting dragged along to the show. I hope there's <laughs> something interesting for me. I appreciate it. She's so. usually she's I've, usually on her laptop oh. or writing notes in, at a wrestling show. Yeah. Sometimes that we've paid for. Sometimes most of the time at the booth that we're working. My and it's, my heart has grown th- grown three sizes this this Christmas season <laughs> because I've heard this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, it, no, it, it it makes me so proud because, um, like as we'll call it head of creative or what I'm doing for this company. Like I make a lot of decisions, but like legit, the guy, the stuff you guys are saying, well, it's part of me. Is so much of Duke, so much of Brandon, mm-hmm. so much of the guys there that are. And it's amazing more- that you have the guys that have those conversations, and you're not just dismissing them. No, you you legit bring it into it, and like, okay, we can work this in like this. Well, like, if you're passionate about something, and I tell young guys this whenever we go to training, and I talk to them, I tell them. If you're passionate about something, you're going to sell that more oh, absolutely. than anything else. If this is what you really want to do and you're passionate about mm-hmm. it, even if it's not even that good, you'll make it good. Well, look at look at the comparison between like what we're talking about with that show mm-hmm. versus what we were seeing on SmackDown yeah. with um, Mrs. Ray Rowe. Yeah, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah Logan. Trying uh, to sell her... She's not passionate about that. No. No. <laughs> she's not. What did I say? So she's she's doing these super Kentucky lines, right? Yeah. And and I'm just like, that's not her. I think they and need to drop that. She yeah. didn't. That was written for her because that's what somebody wrote and thinks a Kentucky girl is supposed to that's sound like. When you like. go, who wrote that? I go, Jerry Lawler. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. who writes it. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels not like it, right? Paul says. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
And like, like no. That's the thing is like it's never gonna have legs mm -hmm. because she's never gonna buy it. And I'm and afraid. Not that she, not that she wouldn't like. Not that yeah. she's not trying to yeah. buy it. Yeah, yeah. It's that it's just so hard for someone to buy into that. And I'm really afraid that sh she'll get that caught up in the way Vince in the way thing because right. she didn't mm -hmm. sell that piece. Like I, guys. Yes. I'm sorry to break this up, but seriously, like I keep looking at the clock and it's just gonna later. All right, later. real quick, we got a lot of learns in the chat room. I want to go through real quick. Kelly Dan says has the best one. <laughs> Kelly says, uh, uh, "Learn that loyalty to the, to the region is so much uh, stronger than loyalty to a single promotion." Mm. There you go. I've seen a lot of faces around a lot of wrestling mm -hmm. in the area lately. Um, Matt Harlan's learned that uh, possibilities for Bianca Belair and her ponytail are nearly limitless. Yes. Also That's learned. Also learned. You shouldn't try to start a CM chunk, a CM Punk chant anymore. That was the greatest thing. Should have. Yeah, it got shut down at that NXT show, right? Should have learned did. that years ago. Yeah, Somebody yeah. started a CM Punk chant at NXT, and it, everybody just turned and booed at the the oh, guy. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. You have no idea how much that like I was done with that chant as soon as he quit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, yeah, wait, uh, also, uh, Alex Bakersfield learned that Damnation is a great show because of Luke Carper. And if you live in a wrestling city, they will chant the wrestlers chant at a sports event. Yeah. Yes. That they will true. do that. that is true. They do a lot of like, if you, if you watch like hockey or basketball stuff, like you'll hear wrestling entrance musics like in between plays and people will start wrestling chants and stuff with it. It's mm -hmm. pretty I believe it. Yeah. I learned this week that mm -hmm. some people know who Ric Flair is exclusively because he's in a rap video. Because <laughs> I mentioned to somebody, yeah, I do some wrestling podcasts and some production. And they're like, uh, oh, yeah, Rick, you know, Ric Flair. I'm like, oh, yeah, I actually met Ric Flair. I told a story about how I met Ric Flair. And he shook my hand and everything at, at a show mm -hmm. at IWC back in like 2009. And uh, <laughs> and uh, he uh, and, and I was like, I was like, oh, you, you know, there's such and such and such and such. And he's like, dude, I have no idea you're talking about. I was like, Hulk Hogan. And like, oh, yeah, I kind of know who that is. I was like, what? <laughs> and he's just like, no, legit. He was in a rap video, and I just know about that woo stuff. You should have said Thunder in Paradise. Yeah, there you go. That's that that's the one that <laughs> would have gone. I think people in. who say they don't know who Hulk Hogan is are just lying. <laughs> yeah, it's like, have you? Where have you been? Uh, Cause, and cause Jesse, if you don't, Jesse learned that. Uh, <laughs> Mark Mann's referee brother was all the work. <laughs> so when I started refereeing, um, I was managing and refereeing at the same time. So I became my referee became my twin brother, Thomas Mann. Wait, you, so you were <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So you were refereeing on the That's shows so you were no, managing? No, no, I, no. I would referee like on certain shows and I'd manage on like other shows around the area. So I wanted a different referee character because when BC Seal started, his refereeing character was Mark Steele, yeah, and not Benjamin C. Steele. So I was yeah. like, I need a, I need a refereeing thing. So for years, I would always say it was my twin brother who was a referee. And like when fans would ask me, they'd be like, "Did you used to referee?" I'm like, "No, that was my twin brother Tom." And they'd be like, "Really?" And I'm like, "Yeah, he he did. It wasn't for him, so he quit." <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a whole idea where I would get fired from a company, and then my twin brother would come back and start refereeing. And then everyone would think I was going to screw people as like the referee, and I wouldn't for a year. I would just be a normal referee. And then one day, like I was, because I was managing Pollock at the time, like after a year of not doing it, it'd be like a Pollock title match. I'd do a quick count, and I would look up, and I'd just put the hat and glasses on and be like, You guys are idiots. <laughs> you guys are idiots. That's amazing. It was me all along. It was me, Austin. <laughs> You love the long birds. Marcus, man, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people find you online? Nope, that's Missy. There you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> find me um, at uh, MarcusMan2Ns, uh, M-A-N-N-B-H-S. That's my Twitter, at MarcusManBHS, for the Black Hand Society, which I'm repping their shirt tonight, that I still have for sale if you want to buy them. They're super cool. Um, find me on Facebook. Um, who, all was, who all was Black Hand Society Black Hand Society was uh, myself, uh, Peyton Graham, Jack Pollock, um, Edric Everhart and Ty Cross. That was the original group with a secret member of Chris Taylor that we never initiated, but it was <laughs> close. Um, Facebook, Marcus Mann. Uh, check out uh, the Rise Wrestling, Rise underscore wrestling on Twitter and Rise Wrestling on Facebook, where you'll see a lot. I, I'm posting regularly on there and stuff. Mm. So follow all my social media, even, our, even my Instagram that's just pictures of coffee cups. 
Huh. It's all mug shots. Nice. It's my favorite dish. <laughs> Bobby of J-Town. I just followed Marcus on Twitter. I just want to say. <laughs> <laughs> so you got one new follower. Sick. It worked. <laughs> There you go. It pays off. Hashtag mayhem. Buck. I want to plug Marcus's Twitter too. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of mine. At Bobby F. J. Town's mine. Bobby F. J. Town. That's going to start at least one new show on Swigertron Media because I'm going to give him a new yes. mic. <laughs> yeah, that's our deal. <laughs> Maybe, I'll buy, deal Maybe I'll buy one for wheels too. I don't know. We'll and see. And I learned I have a new dad and mom this week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, dreams come true. Also, Mad Mike <laughs> up in Poughkeepsie, New York. You can you can find me at a toy store. <laughs> always at a toy store. At least until the holiday. Always. Aren't they all always, shutting down? Always at a toy store. Oh, and he's gone. Oh, you can oh, also find me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machine. Um, I I'll be talking about wrestling at some point on there. Probably I don't know. I'm like two weeks behind on NXT and two hundred five live. This is horrible. We need to figure out what's going on. How so. long has 205 Live been on the air? A uh, year. They, uh, they actually just, yeah. uh, last week's was the, the yeah, year anniversary. anniversary. Okay, yeah. I'm a year behind on 205 Live. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You need to catch uh, up on PowerPoint presentation. Yes. You, you we, can catch up by cut. listening to old episodes of The Midweek War. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, also, hey, man, Missy. Uh, I'm not Mayhem Missy. No, M- Missy of Mayhem. <laughs> producer <laughs> producer <laughs> Missy of Mayhem. <laughs> Mayhem producer. Missy is a different person. Is this our first year anniversary? Doing Sorg, show? Sorg, is this your first time? <laughs> is this... Wow. Is this yes. your first time? Yes. How many episodes have we done? 599? Yeah, this is episode Long 599. That's how behind I am. It feels like the first pod. It feels like the very first pod. Jeez. Wow. Hey. First, first Just wait until next week when there's alcohol involved. Oh, boy. Sorgatron on the Twitter. Sorgatronmedia.com for all the fine, fine podcasts. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Join us here Tuesdays, 10 p.m., but not until the new year because we'll be a special start time a little bit earlier for the Wrestling Mayhem Show Christmas special and the Indie Mayhem Show <laughs> STD Christmas special yeah. as By well. The way, if you have special drinks you want Sorg to drink, oh, geez. please email us goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. If you want Sorg. to create a Mayhem Show drinking game, which I highly encourage, please do that. With I want show. Sorg to drink Gatorade. Mm-hmm. Oh Gatorade with good. vodka. Got Get it. Electrolytes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.